Hi, welcome to Glow's Kindred Kitchen and I'm Glow. Today we are going to be making smothered pork chops and there's several ways to do it and I'm going to just show you one of the ways that I do mine. Um, one of the nice things about pork right now, it's very economical to cook for a family and actually I'm using pork steaks today and um, I got these um, marked down even though it was like two or three days before they, you know, it was to expire. I guess they just wanted to move it on. But, um, so I just thought I would show you what I do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have my pork steaks here and I had froze these when I brought them home. And I, what I do is I individually wrap them in saran wrap and I have some more in the freezer still. Um, but that way by doing that, you can select how much you want to cook instead of putting the whole pack in the freezer. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and um, start seasoning. And what I do is I lightly sprinkle the salt. And pepper. I'm going to use this one because it comes out a little bit quicker. And then I use a little bit of garlic and onion powder. This is onion powder. And this is the garlic powder. And of course you can omit any of these if either something that you really don't care for or your family doesn't care for. And then I also use ground mustard. Ground mustard goes very well with pork. And just lightly. And the other thing I use is some sage. And this is rub sage. And let's see. So you just kind of lightly put it on. And sage goes real well. With what, it. what does rub sage mean, Miss Glow? Well, when they do this, it's sage leaves that they've rubbed when they're drying, oh, and um, it's more intense flavor. Okay. And let's see. Oh, thyme. But I put, I'm going to put the thyme in after I have browned these. Um, the reason being is these are almost like needles, if you'll say. And I don't want those to really brown on this when I'm cooking it, so because I don't want it to burn at all. So I'm just gonna leave it until I um, make the gravy for it. So I'm gonna rub this on. And I'm going to turn on my pan here to warm up. And I use a cast iron pan, and I'm going to put it on medium. I'm going to let this warm up, and in the meantime, I'm going to be flipping these over to do the other side. And as soon as my pan's ready and the chops are ready, I'll be back. Hi. Well, my pan is warming up here, and I've seasoned both sides of these pork steaks. And now what I'm going to do is lightly dust the top of these with just all-purpose flour. And the reason I'm not putting them in there because that my pie plate's not as big as these um, pork steaks. I mean, I probably could dredge them in it, but this will work just fine. So then what I'm doing is I'm just going to rub this in. And you don't want a heavy coating, just lightly. This one over here can use just a little bit more. Okay. And we're going to flip this over. We'll do the other side. Oops, got to flip it over. See how easily that goes on? 
Very easy, Miss Glow. Yep. Okay, so now I'm going to wash my hands, and I'll be right back after I get my hands washed here, and I'll show you how what I put in my pan for my um, oils. All right, well, I got my hands washed, and I always keep a sink full of warm soap, uh, soapy water over there to help do that, and also to put dishes in. Now, what I'm doing here is to make sure my pan is hot enough, and it definitely is. When you hear that sizzle and you see that water jumping around there, you know your pan's perfect for the next step. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting some olive oil in here, but it's not the first pressing. This is specifically for sauteing and everything, so it has a higher burn temperature to it. You'll probably see it simmering pretty quickly. How much did you put in, Miss Cole? Oh, that's a good question. I would say that's probably about a tablespoon and a half. Okay. And I'm going to put some butter in. And by combining the oil and the butter like this, it helps so that the butter will not burn. You just get a spatula here. So now what I'm going to do is just move this around in the pan. And now I'm going to put these pork steaks in the pan. And it's going to take about five minutes on each side um, to brown lightly. And as um, soon as they start to brown a little, I'll be back to show you what I look for before I flip them. Hi. Well, we're back, and it's time to flip it. I wanted to show you. See how... The, um, the drippings are starting to rise and, and stuff from the meat. That's an indication that it's time to flip it. And these do have a bone in them. And I prefer to cook with a bone in my chops. It just adds a lot of flavor. Especially when you're doing smothered ones with a gravy. It's very good. So that was about four minutes. To cook on that side so it'll be probably three to four minutes on the other side and i'll be back in just a tiny bit hi well welcome back wanted to show you when i'm cooking these it's been about two and a half three minutes my pan is on medium and i've already rotated it when i say rotate i go like that so that it has even cooking so i'm going to go ahead and turn it around because i had just turned it about a minute ago and you can see how the drippings are starting to, and the juices are starting to come up. And that's what you want. When that happens, we're going to go ahead and remove these pork chops now. And I'm going to start in with making the gravy. And I rotated these chops on the other side, just like I showed you. But both sides are brown. You can see how nicely brown those are. Good, but they're Nicole. not done on the inside yet. And this is really jumping, isn't it? Yep. So now what I'm going to do is, before I started, I cut up one medium onion. I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. And just dice it up small. See the size I did? It's about a cup. And I did one uh, uh, thing of celery, and I put that in. One and this thing is called a rib of, of celery. What, what's is one thing? How much, Miss Bo? That's about a half a cup. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and stir this up. And we may have to add a little bit more of the butter and the olive oil to this. What we're going to do after this sautés a little, we're going to add our un, our mushrooms and let that kind of uh, cook a little bit. And then we're going to be making a roux to make our gravy. So I'm going to go ahead and let this saute for a few minutes, and I'll be back to show you the next step. Hi, well, I've been sauteing my um, onion here and my uh, rib of celery. And I did check that while we were um, took a break there from with you guys. And it is called a rib for uh, one you know long piece of it. So what I did is I put about a, a teaspoon of butter in there, and I'm going to add a little bit more of the olive oil, about the same amount. And now I'm going to add our mushrooms, and we have about a cup of 
sliced up mushrooms here. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And mushrooms and onions and celery are very healthy for you. In fact, I was just reading an article the other day. Uh, they have done more research on mushrooms, and they were saying that it really, if you eat mushrooms almost every day, it will decrease your chances of getting cancer. Um, something to do with um, one of the chemicals that's in this. And um, I found that interesting. I had read a couple articles about it a few years ago, too. I guess they're doing more and more research on it. And of course, onions and celery are very healthy for you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and let this continue. It's on medium. And we'll be back in just a couple of minutes once the um, mushrooms get cooked well, too. Hi. Well, our um, onions and mushrooms and celery are sauteing up really nice. And they're starting to become translucent and soft so at this stage we're going to go ahead and add flour and why the reason we're doing this is we're going to make a roux and um i make the roux right with everything in here i don't remove it and i would say there was probably a quarter to a third of a cup of flour there and what is a roux miss flour for people that don't know a roux is half um well, you make it up to make your gravy uh, or your sauce, and it's half of oil, and then the other half, it's equal parts oil and um, flour. So, okay. now what I'm doing is I am just sauteing this, and I'm the reason I'm doing this now is I want to brown this flour really well. And the reason I'm doing that is because that is going to give our gravy some really nice flavor along with our veggies that are in here. And I don't have much flour left, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit more olive oil, about a teaspoon, and the same amount with the um, butter. I'm going to mix that up, and we're just going to use up this flour, because otherwise I'd be throwing it out anyway. Because you never want to reuse flour that you've been using for your beef or your poultry or anything. So I'm going to let this cook here and saute for a couple of minutes till it really browns up nice. I wish you guys were here to smell this. This is just really good. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hi, well I've been sauteing these onions and mushrooms and celery for a bit and that's what we're looking for. Oh yeah, look at that. That is what you call flavor. So I Looks good, Miss Cole. Yeah, it does. So now our next step is, remember the time I told you about that I hadn't put in? Now I'm going to put it in. Right, because it's sharp like needles. And I'm rubbing it through my fingers to get the uh, flavoring started up since that's dry. Oh, you can smell that. Can you smell that, Richard? The A little time? bit. Very A little intense. bit. Must be coming my direction more than yours, so it smells really good. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a bay leaf. And just a small one like that. I put that in. By putting this in now, it's going to soak up a little bit of that oil and help it bloom, just like um, I did with the thyme, since I hadn't included those before. Now I'm going to add some water. It'll probably sizzle a little bit, and I do a little at a time. Just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. Now if you didn't have onions and mushrooms and celery on hand, you might have, you know, the uh, canned condensed soups. And one of those you could use instead of doing this step if you um, didn't have these ingredients. 
and it would be good. It really would. But I think by doing it this way, it just you have more richness. Let's see how that's already starting to thicken up from the flour roux mixture that we had made. There it goes. Yeah, looks good. Add a little bit more. And that's a quart size canning jar of water I have there. And I did that so we could keep track of how much I'm using because I am definitely a cook that's by sight. And so sometimes I forget how much I've, you know, put in. But I want this to be more exact for you guys than trying to do that. Okay. Now we're going to start adding some more seasonings, too. I like this better than bouillon um, stuff, and this one is beef. You can put chicken in it, too, if you want it instead. And I'm going to start off with about a half a teaspoon. And if you noticed, I didn't add any additional salt yet, but this definitely has salt in it. So you got to consider the, all of that when you're starting to add your seasonings because you definitely don't want it to be over salty. So I'll put that spoon right there. Get this going. And see how that even changed the color. Yes, it did. I would before. say we can add a little bit more water. Smells good. Now we're going to add some Worcestershire sauce. And I shake it good. And about a teaspoon should be fine. And I'm also going to add some soy sauce. It's regular soy. About a teaspoon. And some kitchen bouquet. And all three of those um, ingredients we just put in here, they add a, some richness of flavor and um, it just really enhances everything. How much kitchen bouquet was that? Oh, well? maybe a third of a teaspoon. Okay. Not much. A little bit goes a long ways, actually, with all three of those last ingredients. You can always add more, but you can't take it away, so start off small. Now, I'm going to sample this and just see where we're at with the seasonings. Mmm. That's good. I'm going to put just a little bit of black pepper in it, and I think we're good to go. And we may have to, um, you know, tweak it when it's all done, but um, what I'm going to do next is add these pork steaks. And I did cover them with foil as they were setting there. And remember, these are not completely done yet. So... Let me move this up. Actually, I can use that to just move that over. And here's the other one. And see these juices that are on the platter? I'm going to go ahead and put those in there too. Because that's all good seasonings for this. Set this down. I'm going to get a spoon here. What I want to do is to get some of the gravy up on top of these ch uh, pork steaks. Oh, look how good that looks already. It smells really well. Yummy, yummy. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this down to low. And this is, we'll get that bay leaf down in there so it adds some really nice flavor. 
And I'm going to add just a little bit more water because this will reduce as it's cooking. So, so far we have done, um, let's see, two and a half cups of water. So I'm going to go ahead and put a lid on it. And we're going to let this simmer for a good hour. I have it on the lowest setting. And you can, at this point, you could actually put this in your oven and you wouldn't even have to worry about it. But I'm just going to leave it on my stove here because I'm going to be in the kitchen today. And uh, keep in mind, too, your burners might cook a little hotter than some other people's. And mine do cook hotter. So I'll be watching this. I may even have to move it halfway off this burner so that it doesn't cook too fast. Because low and slow is what you want to be have it really tender. So we'll be back in a while. Hi, well, welcome back. Our pork steaks have been simmering away for about an hour here. And the last 15 minutes, I actually, let me show you what I did with the lid. I went like this with it. I did check it to make sure they were still covered and everything, but then I left the lid a little bit ajar. And the reason why is I felt like it needed, the, the gravy needed to cook down a little. So let's go ahead and we can remove the pork steaks. Mm -hmm. Looks good, Miss Glow. Thanks, they're very tender. It's a big one, too. Hmm. Yeah. I know I can only eat a half of one of these, maybe even just a third. But we'll split when it starts. Smells so good. I wish you guys were here to have dinner with us tonight. This is just really good. As you can tell, this is just a really easy recipe. And it's all from scratch. And like I said before, if you didn't have, you know, all these ingredients I put in here, you could use a can of cream of soup, like mushroom or celery or even cream of uh, chicken you could do. But one thing I always do before I serve this is I find that bay leaf and I remove it. This you can't eat. It's good for seasonings, but it's very tough, and I would hate to see someone choke on it. Anyway, you can see how nice this gravy turned out. Looks good, Miss Cole. Yeah. And what we're going to do tonight is serve this with some rice, and um, with some steamed rice, fluffy rice that I have a recipe for on um, YouTube as well. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe to our channel. We would really appreciate it. Bye.